All right, welcome back to another video. We have an insane offshore spearfishing trip, as you guys can tell. Got some crazy fish, big ling, big grouper. You guys stay tuned, check it out. We are back in Louisiana, and in this one, we are meeting up with that guy right there, Ronnie Collins. I actually dealt with him in 2016 and speared my first Wahoos. Here we are years later, diving again. This time, we're going out deep in some clear blue water to spearfish at the oil rigs. We're already seeing more rigs than I see in all of Corpus when we dive. It's just a field out here. Rigs everywhere. On the way out, we find a really good weed line. The water is clear, and we decide to hop in to check it out. You can see bottom, but there's no fish. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have my thing on the dive mode, but you can see it. Don't be afraid of the dark. Be careful with stars. Not every light is gonna guide you, baby. Don't let them rain on your spark. Keep it close to your heart. All of the pressure's gonna drive you crazy. So if you guys have watched my other diving videos, you know that in the Gulf of Mexico and Texas, we seldom ever see the bottom due to the Merclair and it's no different in Louisiana. So that's what makes today so special. You guys heard the other guys were just as surprised to hear that I could see the bottom from the surface. Typically these fish can just get down in that murk, tuck away, and you would never know they were there. But today we get to see every fish living on the rigs. There's some sharks circling way out. There's tons of mangrove snapper down at the bottom. There's some giant red snapper. Unfortunately, it's not season. But what I'm really looking for here, since the water is so clear, is a grouper. Ronnie had been talking about, and he had actually been shooting some grouper recently, so I thought, why not take advantage of this visibility, see if we can look under those deep horizontal pipes and find a big, tasty scant grouper or a gag grouper.
Man, I wish it was red snapper season. We saw some giants. No grouper, just tons and tons of snapper. All right, we just pulled up to a wreck don't, don't throw anything in there. out here around all the rigs and check it out. You can see it down there. That's how you know you got good viz. A bunch can, of fish coming up. I can't even see the bottom. That is insane. Can you see it through the camera? Did you drop some chum balls? Wow, Dude, that is so unreal. Clear.
that a grouper? Yeah. Ronnie did. Woo! Oh, no. <laughs> That AJ is eyeing that thing. <laughs> How deep was it? 78. Watch out! Find a boat. Rupa! Hell yeah! <laughs> that AJ wanted it. Oh yeah? Hey, that's like a, that's like a 100 pound AJ. Yeah. He's huge. He's he was it He could have ate this thing in yeah. one bite. Alright y'all, so we are at an undisclosed location, a wreck. And uh, Ronnie's been saying that he's been seeing some grouper. He's actually been spearing quite a few. I haven't seen one, but... Check out what I saw him swim up with. That is a stud. So what kind of grouper is this? This is a scamp grouper. Scamp grouper. Tell us what happened on the dive. So uh, got in on a deep wreck and uh, dropped a little chum. Saw some big AJs. Made a deep drop. Made a drop down to 75. He was sitting on the pipe. Let me get close and the rest was history. That is awesome. Yeah, so uh, I saw Ronnie swimming up with this grouper. I was super stoked. And then just this massive AJ had to be. You think he's pushing 100, right? Yeah, he's pushing 100. 100 pounds comes up, and I think he's just going to inhale the grouper. I was like, oh my gosh. That's just the crazy, wild things that happen out here in Louisiana. I've never seen this many fish AJs, ling, kingfish, Spanish mackerel. Even grouper, big grouper. Where we dive, usually those big grouper are 150 foot down and they're just hard to get to free diving. But here they come up a little bit shallower, 75, 80 foot, and you can get it done. Three dudes going after him. Yeah, like, I, they, they swam right these, behind These you. fish are yeah. dead meat. I, I saw them swim through the rig. I heard the shot, I went back, and I seen them go together. We had two guys on each fish. Three, two, one. There's no way those sling were getting away. <laughs> All right, trying to make your fish look big even though it's smaller. Not by much, dude. These are two really big ones. We got like similar lengths, but I got you on girth. On the girth. So back in the water at the oil rigs, we are seeing some massive amberjack and they're coming up really shallow. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this video, it wasn't season, so we're just gonna have to look at them.
Get ready for some screaming. <laughs> Yo, it is. Oh my god. I'm going to take off. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that before. So here is my last dive of the day, and what I'm looking for is a Kubera snapper. I set up here on this crossbeam to scope out the interior of the rig, see if there's a Kubera hiding behind one of these vertical pipes. But honestly, at this point in the day, I had really bad bottom time, that 10 hour drive from Texas, little sleep, and diving hard all day was really starting to take a toll on me. So I head up early, we see this nice AJ, and on my way up, I actually look outside of the rig and see this stud, African Pompano. I start to kick at it, it veers off, but really, I just had nothing left in me, and I had to head up to the surface. I was actually starting to feel super nauseous when I got up, and I thought I was going to throw up. So instead of staying in the water, I actually got up on the rig and sat there for a little bit to chill out, and just let Ronnie and Ryder know about the AP. So maybe they can go down and get one I'm 76, themselves. 76, starting to come up, and I look out here, and there's a giant AP. And he started swimming away as soon as I saw him. So Ronnie was able to get down and put a shot in one of these African pompano and when he hit the surface his reel was dumped and he was getting towed through the water. Luckily everyone was there to help him out. I jumped off the rig to provide an extra hand and at this point it was just a tug of war against this fish and we were hoping it would stay on. Right, watch the shark. After a few minutes, JD was able to get down there, put the second shot in, and secure the fish. <laughs> 